In today's video, we're gonna be talking about wedding agents and ways to keep your lawn nice and moist. Yo mate, what up? Welcome to another lawn tip vid. Alrighty guys, today's video is on wedding agents and the reason I want to talk about this is because we're getting into some pretty warm temperatures at the moment and our lawns are starting to stress out a little bit and we're getting some hydrophobic soil. So I'll just quickly show you before we start getting into all the science and the ways it all works and blah blah blah. Behind me here is a couple of dry patches in my backyard. So I don't know if you can see it on camera. I'll flip the camera around. As you can see, there's a few areas which are getting just as much water as the rest of the backyard. But they are drying out a lot easier because I have hydrophobic soil and I can tell that it is a lot drier as well because I've been hand watering those patches and they're still not coming back as well as they should be. Now you may be asking yourself, Ben, what the flip is hydrophobic soil? So basically, it's soil that repels water and it won't actually retain that moisture, sorry, it won't actually soak in that moisture or the water that you actually put on top of your lawn. It sort of just beads on top. It's like a waxy surface is there, which is basically what it is. So. The way it happens is basically when organic matter breaks down, sometimes it can form a waxy surface on your actual soil surface there. There's a couple of other factors that go into that, but we won't dive in too deep. But basically, it tends to happen quite a bit, especially when it gets a lot hotter. You find you find you get hydrophobic soil and you really start to struggle with getting your water retained in there and repelling the soil surface. So wetting agents basically help to eliminate these dry spots by breaking the surface tension and increasing the ability for water to absorb into the soil. So obviously instead of the water sitting on top and just sort of beating off like it does on concrete, it soaks in and penetrates and is retained in your soil surface in the root zone, which is what you want. So as we all hopefully know, you obviously need water to keep your grass growing. So it helps aid the process of photosynthesis. It's one of the main components to get your grass growing and make it healthy. If you don't have water, your grass dies. So if you've got soil that is actually resisting the water from going into your soil, you're obviously gonna get some dry spots in your yard. So the way to determine that it is localized dry spot, which is what hydrophobic soil is, so you're basically just getting random dry spots in your backyard, is basically you need to go up there and chuck some water on top of the soil and see if it beads on top or if it actually soaks in. Now if it's beading on top, you've got hydrophobic soil. If it's actually soaking in, I'd be looking more into fungal issues or possibly insect problems as well. But if it is beading on top, you've got localized dry spot. Now I really wanted to show you guys a good example of hydrophobic soil, but my grass is quite long, so you obviously can't see the soil below to see where it's hydrophobic, but it is. Um, so let's just use a concrete example. Can you see me? Right, here's our concrete. Thanks Mr. Obvious. And basically, let's click it on to the right one. As you can see, it's basically how, how hydrophobic soil acts. It sort of just runs off. This is a stupid example. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm doing it. But it just pulls on top. That's how hydrophobic soil works. And it either evaporates from the sun or something, or it maybe a little bit will soak in, but it won't get down to the root zone. That was a pretty stupid example, but hopefully you understand what I mean. Alrighty, so I said before I couldn't show you in my backyard because the grass is so long, but I just thought about something. I put a plug out. Let me just show you guys something. So I watered the lawn this morning. I gave it a really, really nice deep water. So this morning, it's not even that long ago. And that is dry. It's dry as toast. Which toast is pretty dry if you've had toast before. So it's clearly repelling the water on the top. And I know other areas in the backyard, I just had a look, actually do are quite a bit more moist than this little sucker just here. So let's just drop some um, water into it. You see how that's running off the top and down the side of it? It's not actually soaking it in up the top of the soil because it's hydrophobic. Now there is a lot of articles and web pages and everything on the internet that actually talk about how wetting agents work and the way that they stop hydrophobic soil. But I'm not going to go too in depth into that stuff because I'll be talking to you guys for ages and I'll probably bore you and get a little bit too sciencey. So I'll link some articles down below if you're interested in reading them. So you can have a look for yourself and learn some more information on the reason you get hydrophobic soils and how wetting agents work. Alrighty, so I did actually put a post up on Facebook just recently asking people if they had any questions on wetting agents. So we'll just click onto the Facebook post. 
let's just get on down. Scroll down on from my page. If you haven't been to my Facebook page, go check it out. Let's look up lawn tips on Faithy. Look at that beautiful lawn. Anyway, so here's the post just here. So, just see common questions that you get usually. Richard Wilton, the man. What's the best wedding agent to use? Been using Biagra. And for Perth weather, how often would you recommend applying? So I've heard of Biagra before. They actually have a really good product that is good for homeowners and it's really easy to apply. So it's basically on one of those clip-on hose packs that you just clip on a hose on the end of it and you can just spray it out on your backyard. And I think they're about 30 to $35 for one of those. And they're actually a very good wedding agent. I read an article from Globe Australia, which I get a lot of products from and got a hat of theirs as well because they come to work. And basically they did a little test, and I'll link that down below as well, on how Biagra works over time and how it actually works as a wedding agent. And it works really, really well. And especially for the homeowner, it's easy to access, easy to buy. You can just use it quite easily. To answer the second part of your question, Richard, good memory. Basically, how many times do you want to apply it? So people generally say once a month, but it really depends on how hydrophobic your soil is and how you're trying to fix that problem as well. Some people go once a month, sometimes every three weeks it really depends on how bad your soil is so you probably want to start applying it but towards the end of spring so what I can't even think what the end of spring is October November you want to probably do your first application probably start in November I'd recommend do your first app and then try to do them a month apart every time that you do it now also you'll find sometimes it's not going to work for the whole month so you can apply a little bit earlier obviously you just got to be a bit of a lawn detective and look at your lawn and see when it's starting to dry out a bit and it's not taking in the water. A lot of the guys on the Lawn Fanatics use Biagra as well and I've seen their lawns and they are magnificent so it looks like a good product. So someone here has written application, it's Matt, I mean I don't even pronounce your last name bro, Matt Vogel, Vogelli. Application rates of granular and liquid soil wetters would be great with a couple of product examples. Also, how much to water in after application? So, this is one thing that I was speaking to about with one of the chemical reps that came and saw me recently, um, Kev, which you guys might have spoken to him when you ordered some of that NutriPlus fertilizer. Kev's a top bloke. And basically he was telling me the technology for granular products isn't quite up to the level that it is with your liquid products. So, because I was looking at a couple of options for what I could show you guys and what I'm going to be using later on in the video. And he told me that your granular options work, but they're obviously not going to be as great. So I would recommend if you can getting a liquid product. Now for application rates, just have a look at the bag and it's going to tell you how much to put down of the actual product itself. And also, when, what's the last part of your question? How much to water in after application? Now I generally put down 10 mil. They generally say to put enough water down that you can actually see it starting to bubble a bit on the surface. But I generally just put down about 10 mil because you don't want to get it to burn because if you do, you're just going to get a little bit of a yellowy tinge on your grass. Now recently we at work we applied it on a hot day. This is what you don't do. You don't apply on a hot day. And we actually got a little bit of phototoxicity in the grass which means it just yellows off a bit. So it's not technically burning. Well it is but it isn't. It's just the grass stressing out and it went a little bit yellow. It does come back, but you've got to be very careful and make sure you water it in. And that's why I recommend applying it in the afternoon or in the morning. Don't try to apply it in midday, but obviously at work on the golf course, you can't really avoid that unless you're working after hours. And it came back fine. Within two days, it was back to you know, the usual colour, but yeah. Um, so basically, for products that you're looking in the market, I'd be looking at places like the Lawn Porn Guy has a really good product. I'll be talking about that in a second. And also looking at the sea cell super soil wetter make sure you get the super soil wetter i've actually that is actually a decent product i mean it's not going to be as good as your commercial ones that i use at work and that i'm actually going to be using today and even as good as your lawn porn one but it still works and if you want to get into bunnings and quickly get something that is a good option i use something called a, the hydrolink range from globe australia i know new turf does a range which which we also use at work called stamina they do one called stamina 90 stamina express they always have different modes of action express obviously gets it down there nice and quick and you can actually add that with your insecticides and stuff as well which is what we like to do at work and stamina 90 lasts for 90 days potentially i think it lasts more towards a month from the experience i've had from using it but i think there is actual evidence that it can last up to 90 days but from experience i've seen it last up to a month and that's about it now i've got nathan skaysbrook that has to be here pronounce it he says thank you i was looking at the aldi wedding agent they have out and well i've never heard of the aldi wedding agent as i said as we can see here, it is a granule product. And as I said, I don't really recommend the granule products because the technology is not as advanced as the liquid products. How do you pronounce this dude's name? Love your profile pic too, man. Ho Wong Otang. Hong. Yeah, 
anyway. Hey Ben, someone told me you can use dishwashing liquid and it would act the same as a wetting agent. Mm, controversial. Any truth behind this? Or is he a goose and should just watch the video you're about to make? I hope you watch him in. So basically, to an extent, um, dishwashing liquids can work as a wetting agent because they do break the surface tension. Like they do when you're washing the dishes, you know what I mean? Like that breaks the surface tension on the plates and stuff with the grime and that, so it actually gets it off your plates and you can wash it off and I'm struggling, I'm not really a kitchen man, but <laughs> yeah, it, it works the same way basically, but it's obviously not made for turf and you gotta make sure you get a non-ionic one because if you get an ionic one, you actually have potential of burning your lawn because it's not made for turf. Like, I wouldn't even risk going near that stuff because it will actually burn your grass to the max. It's not made for turf, so some most dishwashing liquids are non-ionic anyway so you're pretty safe but it's not going to have a good result and just go buy yourself something at least from bunnings or get something proper like biagra hot tip biagra says on the label watering it immediately is not necessary when instructions are followed followed instructions and i burnt the crap out of the lawns where i didn't water in so same thing i'm not sure when he applied it but it might have been midday when it's really hot and he might have got a phototoxicity in his lawn and he might have got quite a yellow looking problem in his lawn and that's the thing it's always safer just to water these products in instead of leaving them on the lawn and just risking a little bit of burning lawn which you don't want especially when you're working so hard to make your lawn look really nice and luscious and beautiful you don't want to risk those things so i always recommend you water it in anyway there's a lot of wedding agents there that say non-burning but there's still a slight risk that they will burn your grass Paul DeLacy, why are you watering artificial grass? It's not artificial, boy. She real. She real grass. All right, last question. Michael Dickey. Do you think lawn porn moist professional soil wetter is any good, or do you reckon their range is just hype? Now, it's definitely not hype, the lawn porn range. They've actually got professional products that are great for the consumer market. I really believe they've got good products there. Their fertilizers and their wetting agents, I think they've got a growth regulator coming out soon. They actually are decent products. I've looked at the labels and looked at who produced them, and they are awesome products for the homeowner. I think the lawn porn guy, Matt, is doing an awesome job with his channel. He's smashing it in the game at the moment. Go check out his YouTube channel if you haven't seen it, or his Facebook page, which I'm sure you have seen before, lawn porn. A lot of people have seen that around. Um, and I think, Matt, you're doing an awesome job, and you've got awesome products. And if you are thinking about getting something like that, go for it. So this here is the product that I'll be using today. Hydrolink Advanced Professional Product. So I got this one from Globe Australia. It's actually part of their product line. And it's got a little bit of kelp in it as well to help strengthen the roots and get quite a nice root biomass in there. 5%, there's not too much in there. And obviously just, you know, your wedding agent. I won't go in depth into separating what all the different things are because we don't really need to know that. Oh, that was not on purpose. So what I recommend applying it in is going to be a knapsack. The reason that is for that is because I've tried it in one of these little Hortex sprays before. They're great for applying stuff. But it seems to get stuck in the nozzle for some reason. Obviously because it's quite thick. This is quite thick. It's very soapy and quite a thick substance. So it struggles with the Hortex spray. You can still do it, it's just going to take you 10 times longer. So I recommend using a knapsack. Let's go help the water penetrate the soil. Hi. Alrighty, we are all sprayed and all done, chemicals applied, so now we're going to chuck the water down. Now, normally I say water in the mornings, but in these instances when you need to put some chemical out, it's safe to put your water on straight afterwards and water at night. It doesn't matter too much if you do it every now and then. Now, I mentioned earlier you can water in with about 10 mil of water. Some of the actual products you get will say 4 to 6 millimetres. I just like to put a little bit more in just to really be safe with it. But you can get away with 4 to 6 millimetres as well, if you like. But I do prefer putting in just that little bit more, just to be on the safe side. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hopefully you learned something from that. If you have any more questions, chuck them in the comments below. Or find me on Facebook or Instagram and just chuck me a message there. But hopefully you enjoyed that. If you learned something from that, chuck a thumbs up. Subscribe if you have not already. And you have a good week. Whoa. Gotcha. Love the sound of sprinklers. So relaxing.
Yeah.